Hello there, I'm Michael Sherlock from michaelsherlock.com and in this video I want to give you a review of the Apple iPad. Now I've been using the iPad for about a little less than three months uh, since it launched on April 3rd I believe. And I think I can really give you a conclusive review from my hands on with this device. So starting with pricing, it's $499, $599 or $699 for the 1632 and 64GB Wi-Fi only model respectively. And then $629, $729 and $829 for that Wi-Fi plus 3G model. So let's just start off with the pros and cons first, and then I'll give you a more definitive conclusion at the end. So first of all, the build quality of this is superb. Uh, let's move on to battery life though. If you're consuming a lot of content on here, you want it to last for a while. Apple says 10 hours. I think you can actually get more than that. What they've done here is they've actually used two batteries and rigged them together for superb battery performance. I've received 10, maybe 11, 12 hours of use out of this, and I've had no problems. Now, does that mean we sacrifice performance? No, the Apple A4 chip runs at a gigahertz, and it really is quite snappy. Anything I've thrown at it works wonderfully, web browsing with multiple tabs, different applications, highly intensive games on here work really well. And that's just a tribute to the A4 chip, which is also quite efficient. Now, another thing, great web browsing. You think you're going to be consuming a lot of media on this. A lot of it's on the web. So web browsing has to be good. So they have, they now allow multiple apps for web browsing in the App Store. But just on the built-in Safari app, everything loads very nicely. There's no flash, but it has full HTML5 support. So a lot of web content will still work on here. If we check out michaelsherlock.com, everything loads perfectly fine. You can quickly double tap to read the content. You can zoom in and out with fingers. Um, if you want to go to anything else, uh, you know, you wanted to look at the XO3 uh, touchscreen tablet. You could easily go ahead and do that right from here. You can look at pictures. You can watch inline uh, YouTube videos. Other HTML5 attributes will play inline, or you can zoom in uh, for full screen. So they they work really well. Now another reason to buy this device is if you like books. Now Apple ships these with the built-in iBooks application, which is their bookstore, um, and you also can go to the store here purchase whatever you want, uh, you know, $12.99, $11.99 uh, for a lot of things. They have a lot of content. And if you want to read books, uh, there's a lot of free ones as well. So I was able to download several, Pride and Prejudice, Art of War, Adventures of Tom Sawyer, uh, Huckleberry Finn. So you can click on Huckleberry Finn. It'll open it up. You can flip through page at a time, or you can look at it in widescreen. And it'll quickly jump to widescreen, and you can read two pages at a time, and then they'll move like that. It's really a good experience. Now a lot of people question if you can actually read on an LCD screen. Yes you can. I haven't had any problems with it. Um, now what's, you, what's interesting about this is the Kindle DX used to cost around $489. They've dropped the price to $379. But that's a dedicated 9.7 inch non-colored screen for reading only. So for $379 you can get a dedicated reading device, or for $499 you can get a reading device which also has a Kindle app, so you can get all your Kindle books on there as well, uh, and you can do so much more. So it just makes you wonder why people would buy dedicated ebook readers when you have such a good client you know, on the iPad. Now, like I've mentioned, you're going to be consuming a lot of media, so there are a lot of great apps for that. Of course you can synchronize you know, your content onto the device, but there are apps like MLB at Bat, which I've reviewed. This is a great application. It allows for a great streaming experience of Major League Baseball games, um, as well as other features too. Uh, same thing with Hulu Plus, which is an application I reviewed. And there's others, ABC iPlayer. Uh, I don't think it's called iPlayer, but it's called ABC Player. I reviewed that. Great content. Um, you know, we can quickly jump into this Hulu app, and within a few seconds, we can be playing something. The quality is really great, the applications are really nice, and it's really a great idea to have so much content. Now another major seller for this is the App Store. We always want to expand the content and usability of stuff that we've purchased. So for the iPad as well as um, you know other, other uh, Apple products, the iPod Touch, the iPhone, there's an App Store to expand everything with. Now there are a lot of great apps, over 200,000 at this point, but the problem is, um, or one of the issues is, they're called HD apps a lot of times because they're optimized for this bigger screen, but they're, a lot of times they're more expensive, I've found. Uh, another con is the screen isn't very bright, um, especially when you're outdoors, and this is also an issue because it's so glossy. When you're outside trying to read, trying to browse the web, whatever, you're going to have to crank this up to almost 
you know, max brightness just so you can see out there. And it's not very bright. I would have liked to see if it was a little bit brighter. Also on the screen, and a lot of people have commented on this in previous videos, depending on what angle there, you can sort of see this thing is a fingerprint magnet. Even if you wipe it off at the beginning of the day, fingerprints are going to get all over here, so. Another thing that's really annoying, 3G is not available on all models. In fact, it took almost 30 days for the 3G version to start shipping after the Wi-Fi only version was shipping. And I think that's kind of absurd. $130 extra is kind of ridiculous. I mean, these devices are meant to go wherever you want, and if you don't have a 3G version, you're tethered to a Wi-Fi connection. Now, there's Wi-Fi is growing. It's almost in every home. It's almost it's at a lot of businesses, McDonald's, Starbucks. So you have a lot of choices, but let's say you're on a long car trip. You're not driving, of course, and you want to consume some media that you don't actually have on your device. Well, if you don't have 3G, you're kind of out of luck. Another thing, if this is supposed to be a replacement for a computer, not being able to print is kind of ridiculous. Another thing, it's not computer independent. You need a PC to activate it and to sync certain content and to get software updates, you need to use a computer. So if, again, if they're trying to market this as a computer replacement, as a portable replacement, you still need a computer. You shouldn't have to activate it through iTunes. You should be able to do everything in the cloud and without any wires. Also, three, about three months later, this launched on April 3rd, it's still hard to get. If you go to the Apple online store, it takes about 10 days for them to ship this to you. It's still hard to get three months later. That's a little absurd, don't you think? Why does it take three months to still have problems getting this? I was able to get mine on launch, but three months later and it still could take two or three weeks to order this. And of course, you still can't walk into a store and just pick one up willy nilly. Sometimes you can, but a lot of times it's sold out. So that's just a problem. Now to the conclusion part, first I just want to say, is this a big iPod Touch? Uh, a lot of people have said, why would you buy this if you already have an iPhone, you already have an iPod Touch, it's the same thing. Well, the, both of these platforms do run iOS, um, but the larger screen doesn't just allow you more real estate for the same applications. Developers are able to create new apps with toolbars, with overlays, and other features that are just more intuitive than just making bigger iPhone apps. So whereas an iPhone app is pretty linear, you just have the screen and then you have some buttons at the bottom, this, uh, and Mail is a good example if I can pull that up really quickly. Um, you know, so here, here is my, one of the emails that I received. You can just quickly tap on that and you have a little overlay that can bring you to other emails that you have. Or you can put it into a different orientation and you have some content here that you can look at and you can also go through and select different things over here. So the bigger screen allows you more usability. So it's not just getting a bigger screen for apps, but it's a new way to enjoy applications. So it's definitely not a big iPod Touch. Uh, so in conclusion, this is a very great device with an extremely intuitive experience. Anybody can pick this up and use it. I've given it to older people. I've given it to younger children. Anybody can use this. It's really simple. It's really easy. You just click, open, and boom. It's much more intuitive than Mac OS X, than Windows, than a PC, even a desktop. Um, and there's a lot of expansion from the App Store with full HTML5 support in the browser. There's excellent battery life, stellar performance, and 3G on some models. This is the perfect mobile device for anyone looking for a lightweight computing option while keeping the laptop at home. You know, I have a laptop, it's not extremely light, um, but being able just to bring this when I go anywhere, just drop this into a bag or whatever, it's definitely thinner, much more portable, and much easier to use than a laptop, which battery life only lasts two hours, two and a half hours, whatever. This thing lasts all day. If I'm in a car for an extremely long trip, this thing will get me through it without having to worry about external batteries or anything like that. So I highly recommend the iPad. Um, it's really a great device. Again, I said it's a supplementary machine, so you're still going to need a desktop for a lot of day-to-day -day stuff. But, you know, with the iPhone, I found myself using my computer less and less, and with the iPad, even less than that. Because so many things, emails, consuming content, I don't have to go to a full-scale computer anymore to do that. I can do it all from this mobile platform. But if I can give you one recommendation, purchase the 3G model. Now, I know it's more expensive, $130 more, I believe. But it's nice to have the option of data wherever you go. Plus, uh, you don't have a contract, so if you want to pay that $15 a month because you want some data one month but you don't need it the next month, you just take it off and it's not a problem. Um, so, I'm Michael Sherlock from michaelsherlock.com. This is my review of the iPad. Highly recommended device, and I think you should try to pick one up if you have the money, the know-how, um, and you want to wait uh, even at this point to pick one up. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.